सर वी आर ऑनलाइन सर गुड इवनिंग प्योर एफ बी व्यूअर्स इट्स ग्रेट प्लेशर इन वेलकमिंग यू ऑल फॉर टूडे सेशन एंड वी हैव अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक टूडे वी ऑल नो दैट द होल वर्ल्ड इज बिहाइंड सुपाइन पी सी एन एल रिसेंटली सो इवन दो द प्रोसीजर वॉज स्टार्टेड वे बैक इन एटीज नाइनटीन एटीज बाई वेल डी बी एस so there are some uh, practical difficulties and a uh, lot of uh, all the surgeons were mostly trained in prone pcnl so but the scenario changed in the last decade and there are there were uh, uh, resurgence in uh, supine pcnl because mostly because of the uh, rirs also in a in a, in a way uh, because of the ecirs and it has definitely more advantages over prone pcnl Uh, the prone pcnl the surgeons uh, are also now uh, showing keen interest in learning this uh, supine pcnl so mostly the young surgeons upcoming surgeons are all now becoming trained in uh, supine pcnl directly without uh, learning the prone pcnl also so even i, I have been doing uh, only supine pcnls for the last 4 5 years of my career so there is some advantages Over prone PCNL, uh, we we will uh, hear from uh, today's speaker. Nares, put the CV. So today we have a hello, Nares. Yes, it's audible. today's uh, speaker is dr harshavardhan he is from kakinada so he has uh, did his he did his mch from uh, nims institute in hyderabad and uh, after that uh, he went to a scholarship uh, fellowship at lake shore hospital for one year and uh, he has got awards many awards uh, dr madira dr madira dasradi ram memorial endowment prize in 2013 and he has got the second prize in quiz at sogas ap telangana uh, uh, 2016 he has got the first prize in ipca euro sciences quiz in 2015 second prize in quiz 100 years of haringar esophagectomy uh, at mmc chennai in 2013 he has keen interest in uh, teaching and he is faculty and founder of wise academy welcome dr harshavardhan good evening good evening uh, dr hemant yes, hi and uh, so so tell me sir uh, how did you is it uh, supine pcnl you have learned from your pg career or after finishing your pg you started uh, sup- doing supine pcnls no no completely it's a new skill set that i have learned and um, all the credit goes to internet youtube and pulology and uh, mostly to dr chandramohan sir um i am uh, extremely thankful to chandramohan sir for giving the opportunity and also providing a beautiful platform like pure urology where uh, wonderful videos are being posted uh, quite often so my learning of supine pcnl was uh, totally from uh, watching uh, videos from youtube so i started my journey in uh, my career in 2019 practicing in 2019 uh, first year of my practice i was doing only prone pcnl because that is what i was trained into then um, what happened is my brother he is also a urologist uh, dr kaushik so he he said that he was uh, he started doing uh, uh, supine pcnl at hyderabad so i went there um, he along with dr ravi kumar sir at medicore hospital they started doing supine pcnl i watched one case came back and um, started experimenting watching youtube videos and started experimenting so what happened is uh, i had a lot of troubles right from uh, positioning right from giving uh, what kind of anesthesia Uh, how to draw the posterior axillary and everything was a hurdle for me so kind uh, what happened is during that time lot of videos came uh, in youtube especially in pure urology um, on supine pcnl each video i picked up on new point that is how i have um, uh, honed the skill of uh, supine pcnl which i will be sharing in the uh, next coming slides okay so after uh, doing uh, prone and also now supine uh, how do you feel the uh, advantages or uh, how was the transition from prone to supine 
So I started in 2021, uh, mid 2021, I started doing Supine PCNL. Um, once I started the Supine PCNL, I started to love it. I embraced it. And uh, uh, for the last uh, three years, I have not done a prone PCNL. I don't know if someone asked me to do a prone PCNL now. I don't know if I can do it or not. So that is what I am uh, uh, trying to impress upon. Thing is, once you get used to uh, one particular kind of surgery and you start loving it, um, and you understand the concept behind it, it's easy you do that. So actually, that is the mindset. That is a problem why people are not still transitioning from uh, prone to supine PCNL because we are used to do prone PCNL. It's all in the mind that we need to um, accept and change. Okay. So now you feel that you can do all cases uh, in supine position and uh, you don't feel the necessity to go back to prone PCNL. Uh, in the last three years, I have done uh, close to... 370 to 400 cases of supine PCNL. Um, not even one case I had to uh, do in prone. Of course, I did some jugad. I used to, if if sometimes there will be a bad day where I cannot do a puncture, yeah. I used to do RIRS, but not prone PCNL. So, do you feel that uh, online learning from online platforms are enough for a surgeon to switch over from prone to PC, uh, supine? Absolutely, yes. See, uh, okay. if you are having good understanding of uh, CM, if you are having good understanding of the anatomy, uh, and you are having an understanding of PCNL, tone PCNL anyways, then you can, uh, it's just a matter of uh, changing your mindset. See, when yeah. you are able to do a conventional circumcision to stapler circumcision, it's as easy as that. You can just watch some YouTube video and you can switch from tone to supine. Definitely. Okay. Then. So... Uh, we will go to your presentation, sir. You sure. can uh, uh, share your screen. We'll ah. listen from you and over to you. Thank you. Is my screen visible now? Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, good evening and namaste everyone and uh, again uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Pew Urology for uh, making this happen. Uh, my transition from prone to supine happened only after watching uh, uh, videos on the internet. This is one case which I have done in um, November 2022. As you can see it's a staggered calculus almost 6 centimeters. I made two punctures and luckily for me with a lower KLE cell puncture, 24 dilatation, the whole stone could be uh, removed. And um, to give all credit uh, to Chandra Monsal and Pew Urology, I have uh, put a post in Pew Urology Facebook group also um, because of which uh, I could uh, uh, complete this case. So in the coming slides, I want to share how I have learned supine PCNL and how one can transition from bone to supine. It's all... Uh, you can just, everything is there on the YouTube and internet. You need just to pick up some few tips and then you can definitely start doing supine PCNL. Obviously, there are definitely uh, many advantages of uh, supine PCNL. Few things which I uh, uh, liked about supine PCNL is, obviously, you are cutting down the time. So, it translates into finances. You can do under spinal anesthesia. And what I love about supine PCNL is you can access the upper calyx from lower calyx, which was not that easy with prone PCNL. And the whirlpool effect is also uh, beautiful in supine PCNL. More so from surgeon's perspective, ergonomics is most important. You can sit and operate uh, in supine PCNL, which is not the case with the prone PCNL. So wearing the lead apron, especially with the high volume center, it will definitely wear you down. Uh, if you are sitting and operating, it will definitely add to add more years to your surgical career. These are certain situations where uh, uh, supine PCNL will be helpful. Um, you are doing upper electric stone, migrates. No need to turn the patient. Just tilt the patient, puncture, remove the stone. Upper electric stone, some lower electric stone plus PCNL. Again, no need of changing the position. You are result plus PCNL, happily, supine PCNL is advantageous. RIRS, you are not able to pass scope. No, again, no need to turn the patient. Superman PCN will help. Retained stent, you have stone in the bladder, ureter, and uh, uh, kidney. So, again, Superman PCN is definitely helpful in these uh, uh, situations. And ECARS, as uh, pretty well uh, demonstrated in many videos, ECARS goes well with Superman PCN. 
so as homo sapiens we have evolved evolution is the way ahead so we need to see the change accept it that is how we evolve that is how we have evolved from eswl from pcnl to rirs and now supine position is not new as uh, dr hemant has said it's nothing but a old wine again served being served in a new glass one of the one of the inspiring uh, uh, lectures which made me to take up supine position was by dr uh, gaido gusti who has mentioned two uh, take home points all young urologists should take take up supine pcnl so after seeing that presentation i thought why not me so that motivated me to uh, accept the challenge and take up supine pcnl and i was applied to do a supracostal puncture be it prone or uh, uh, in supine position in the early days of my career so uh, dr gusti has demonstrated that supine pcnl is much more safer uh, to do a supracostal puncture so with all these things in mind i thought i will take the challenge and i have watched many videos and moved on so this process of uh, learning from distance is not new it has been since um, the times of mahabharata uh, we pretty well know about the example of ekalavya and dronacharya as you can see this is my youtube playlist um, i have uh, saved supine pcnl playlist almost there are 20 to 25 beautiful videos in pure urology Uh, at the end of the presentation i will share the playlist you can watch these videos and they will help you in defining and knowing the technique of supine pcnl simple all patients who are fit for prone pcnl can be taken up for supine pcnl be it obese pediatric redo and on the kidneys all cases what not all cases can be taken up for even who are not fit for prone pcnl can be taken up for supine sir even who are not fit for prone pcnl oh, exactly be... exactly all those uh, even patients who are not fit for uh, um, uh, prone pcnl cardio respiratory reserve is poor obese patients all these patients can be taken up so pcnl per se is a uh, uh, challenging and uh, interesting surgery because you are seeing a 2d image in the cr operating on a 3d organ and that that too it is mobile in both cephalocaudal and medial lateral direction so you are trying to hit a moving target like uh, arjuna so what i do in the pre op uh, um, work up is my all almost all patients i operate with a ultrasound ct scan which is a plain ct and rgp contra ct i advise only when i have some doubts like if it is stagon calculus or i want to know more about the anatomy or if there are any anomalies uh, in that uh, particular case in these situations i ask for a contrast study maybe ivp or contrast uh, ct otherwise usually i go up with ultrasound ct and rgp and urine culture is mandatory for all uh, the patients in the pre operative thing apart from consent i counsel the patients regarding respiration i educate them that on my command they may have to hold their respiration this is this will be very helpful tip because sometimes the kidney is hypermobile in uh, supine pcnl where, uh, when you ask the patient to hold his or her respiration it will definitely you uh, more it will make your surgery more easy and uh, spend time in reading the ct scan both the axial and coronal cuts lots of information and we are more worried about uh, if you are any trespassing through any Uh, peritoneum bowel or solid organ like liver so closely observe the axial cuts and also the coronal coronal cuts and all my cases initially i used to do in general anesthesia but after watching youtube videos i came to know that it can be done happily under spinal anesthesia this is where the command of respiration holds so supine pcnl before starting the case the most important thing is to draw the posterior axillary line so this is how i draw my posterior axillary line i take up the patient in sitting position just before giving spinal anesthesia initially i used to struggle as i said when i came back from uh, watching one case of supine pcnl i didn't know how to draw the posterior axillary line uh, i tried multiple positions sitting standing even in prone position but off late this is the best thing i found Uh, just before giving spinal anesthesia take the time and draw the posterior axillary line and after drawing the posterior axillary line uh, kindly mark out your anterior superior iliac spine and also the ribs and it is my habit to make nine squares 
So I will tell you what is the advantage of uh, boxing, uh, making these nine squares in the upcoming slides. This is a presentation by Dr. Arun Kumar, sir, uh, who has done in pure urology. Initially, my Lakshman Rekha was uh, that which was drawn in the sitting position. So after watching SARS video, I came to know that uh, after putting the patient into proper supine position, you can again draw the posterior axillary line because all the bubble, peritoneum and contents move more medially. So when you are drawing the new posterior axillary line, it will help you gain at least two to three centimeters. So you can go more anterior, especially when you are trying to make a puncture in the lower calyx. Almost all lower calyxal punctures are uh, more anterior. So if you are drawing a posterior axillary line, after putting the patient in a, a supine position, it will definitely help in gaining at least three centimeters. If you're still worried about trespassing or puncturing into the bubble, then have an intraoperative ultrasound and you can make a uh, anterior puncture. Having said that, again, uh, multiple positions have tried uh, the traditional conventional Valdivia position, and then uh, I watched videos of uh, Dr. Aditya Sharma. I spoke to him and uh, advocated this Fosmal position. Later on, um, uh, now I am putting all my patients in proper supine. No lithotomy, no stirrups, nothing. Only if I am contemplating to do a ECARS. Otherwise, I did not find much use of putting the patient in lithotomy position. So this uh, presentation by Dr. Uh, Professor Isam in uh, pure urology definitely helped me un in understanding uh, the new position. So this is how I put uh, the patient into position. Uh, initially, I used to uh, roll, let's see, obviously to put the patient in position, we need to um, put some supports, one below the shoulder and one below the buttock to open up the space where we want to operate. I used to try with bolsters, uh, sandbags, and also uh, one liter normal saline. But off late, I am using only folded towels. The advantage of using folded towels is they are universally available. You can adjust the height depending upon the patient, obese patient, thin patient, whatever it is, you can roll it up, you can roll it down, you can adjust the height, this will open the space much beautifully. For any safe surgery, we need to have a better understanding on the technicalities and anatomy. The only funda, only relevant anatomy thing that we need to remember is SPM. That is superior poles, superior pole of kidney is posterior and medial. If you remember that, while as I said, while you are trying to puncture, lower calicial punctures are almost always very close to the posterior axillary line. And as you go above, as you go cephalard, your punctures are away from the posterior axillary line. This is because the orientation of kidney is as such. So once you have positioned the patient in proper supine, this is how the calices are oriented. You can see the green ones are the anterior calices and the pink ones are the posterior calices and the ribs are marked. So this is how the kidney is oriented. So when you are trying to make a lower calicial puncture, as I said, you are close to the posterior axillary line. When you are trying to move cephalad, your puncture goes further down. So again, there is always this debate, which calyx to puncture, posterior calyx, anterior calyx, lateral calyx, any calyx which you feel is, uh, uh, you, you can safely do a puncture. So almost, see, in supine TCNL, it is always better to puncture a calyx which is lateral and always better to choose a anterior calyx because it will suit the ergonomics. I used to mix my contrast one is in one is to one ratio, like uh, 10 ml of contrast with 10 ml of uh, normal saline. But um, you know, one of the first videos in pure urology, Dr. Savnis has mentioned that uh, always use a very dilute contrast. It was it was a definitely useful tip for me uh, because when you are using a very dilute contrast, especially which is much lighter than the stone, it will help you in better understanding which is a anterior calyx and which is a posterior calyx. Usually, when you are doing RGP, do it yourself in supine PCNL or in prone PCNL. And while you are doing RGP, make a note which calyces are filling first, which calyces are filling late. In supine PCNL, it is easy to identify anterior calyx. 
they are lighter than the posterior calices they feel late on rgp and if you are still having doubt you can rotate the cm towards you the anterior calices will move away from you they will move towards the spine so they are light late and leaves you that is all about anterior calices see here you can see few rgps have put up make spend some time immediately after giving rgp don't hurry and go for a, a puncture spend some time in analyzing the rgp here you can see the green ones are posterior calices and the light faded wings uh, seen with the pink arrows are the anterior calices and what i learned in the last 3 years is always try to select a calyx and don't forget spend some time and have a backup plan select your second calyx because sometimes what happens is there is contrast extravasation there is pooling of contrast all around you cannot uh, uh, see the particular uh, best choice calyx then you may have to abandon the surgery and come out so instead what you can do is have a backup plan now all cms are equipped with transferring of the image and saving the image or else you can take a photographs of the first rgp so you can understand the other calyces as well so that if something goes wrong you can always have a backup plan or a second puncture so these are again how to identify the anterior and posterior calyces in this video you can see already rgp done but i could not uh, see the um, anterior calyces so gently inject contrast wait for some time now you can see in the right hand circle area you can identify the faint seen anterior calyces so do your rgp yourself and wait for some time and definitely it is worth it to spend some time on reading the rgp at again there are sometimes what happens is there are anterior calyces which are hidden behind posterior calyces in this particular patient you can see that the scope the sheath is going in between the two calyces it looks like it is going in between the two calyces but once you tilt the ce arm 30 degrees beautifully it is unmasking the anterior calyx so these things can happen so you can spend time if you still have having doubt till the cm to 30 degrees while you are doing rgp it will help in unmasking new anterior calyces which were hidden behind the posterior calyx so this is another case you can see the green ones are the posterior calyces and i'm trying to the red one the pink one is the anterior calyx as you can see here once the cm is tilted to 30 degrees two new anterior calyces popped up. So now you can choose the lateral calyx and uh, do a safe surgery. And most of the time, urologists are worried about injuring the colon. Supine PCNL is one such thing where colon is much better appreciated than colon PCNL. You can see here a few RGPs I have uh, posted. The encircled yellow ones are colon. So spend time in identifying which calyx you want to puncture identifying your second target and spend time in identifying the colon and, it, and its relationship with your uh, calyces. This particular patient, yeah, I was uh, uh, targeting a, a lateral calyx. As you can see in the encircled yellow thing, the colon is moving uh, cephalocardially with my needle. So if you are keen and observant, the chance of injuring a colon is very less and a number of studies have confirmed the same that the injury to colon in supine PCNL is much lesser when compared to prone PCNL. So this is the most important and crux of uh, doing PCNL. If you understand the basics of CM, prone or supine, everything, both it's same. So initially, um, I had a lot of difficulty in understanding CM because there are multiple terms being used, posterior calyx, anterior calyx, anterior to target, posterior to target, Till the CM head and in one video they used to tell till the CM towards you away from you so a lot of confusion and I couldn't uh, uh, really pick up uh, uh, the understanding of CM then luckily for me uh, Chandamohan sir has put up a couple of videos my understanding of CM has completely changed in the initial days as you can see this is what I used to paste in my operation theater uh, I could not understand so I pasted something on the theater if it is going towards foot end then you are anterior so whenever I had doubt, I used to have a glance at my uh, uh, pasted paper and then I used to proceed for surgery. So all these things happened only because of watching and learning from YouTube videos. 
this is a wonderful video by dr raghavendra in um, again in pure group sar has beautifully demonstrated how to read an rgp one of the best videos ever um, how to understand cm of course it was a prone pcnl uh, rgp interpretation but prone or supine it doesn't matter rgp and interpretation of cm doesn't change because physics doesn't change so there are only three movements in cm that we need to remember for a safe supine pcnl one is moving the cm away from you one is the cm moving towards you and the other movement is moving the cm towards the head end of the patient when you are doing a supine pcnl quite often what happens is when you have turn this is a rgp as you can see in the image too rgp done in pure pure supine but when you position the patient the rgp image moves close to the spine sometimes it also overlaps the spine to avoid this all you need to do is tilt the cm away from you 10 or 15 degrees away from you it will beautifully open up the space otherwise the image will overlap onto the spine you will have difficulty in identifying the calices and uh, sometimes we uh, do a improper puncture especially these things happen with a very thin patient you can see thin patient despite my rotation of cm away from me the rgp image was uh, overlapping onto the spine but with time and experience you can uh, further tilt the cm and understand the rgp and proceed for surgery my understanding of cm interpretation uh, i should give all credit to uh, dr manish uh, sharma manish sinha sir he has done videos on 2d videos wonderful videos um, completely it has uh, changed my perspective of understanding understanding cm uh, uh, thing you can please watch these videos on youtube and also available on pure urology there are different uh, puncture techniques once you have a proper understanding on cm you have grip on how to what movement um, causes what kind of uh, changes in the uh, rgp you can select your technique it is a triangulation bulls eye craniocardial there are multiple names so whatever you are comfortable adapt to one technique pick it up learn the other techniques also because sometimes the only one technique might not help you out so to simplify things this is what i follow there are multiple things but ultimately tilting the cm towards head end of the patient is the most convenient according to me because it is easily understandable and the movement of the needle is much better appreciated than the other movements uh, which have been described only three things can happen when you are trying to make a puncture let us assume this is the calyx you are either entering the calyx or you are anterior to it or you are posterior to it so if you understand the process and physics of cm then it is very easy you can make a safe and secure pcnl either in prone or supine in zero degree let us say all either it is anterior or posterior or at the desired target at zero degree the needle looks like you are into the target so when you tilt the cm to 30 degrees head end of the patient if it is not moving the needle is not moving then it means you are at the perfect puncture if it is moving towards the foot end then you are anterior to the desired target if it is moving towards the head end of the patient then you are posterior to the desired target just you can by heart this this is nothing but a simple science experiment which we used to do in our childhood you have have a candle or touch light two different things but uh, when you put a light they all they both look parallel but once you start moving your touch light the shadow also moves the same thing happens in cm so for demonstration i have made couple of videos so the pink ones are the anterior calices and the green ones are the posterior calices the surgeon is trying to make a puncture into the anterior calyx actually as you can see so in this scenario he has made a perfect puncture into the calyx anterior calyx and you can see in the zero degree the cm image the needle and calyx are in alignment and same when the cm is tilted to 30 degrees also the needle and calyx are in perfect alignment this means you are a, you made a perfect puncture 
proceed for uh, further dilatation. This is scenario two. Again, surgeon is trying to make a puncture into the anterior calyx, that is the pink one. As you can see, his needle is passing just anterior to the calyx. But in zero degree, as you can see, the shadow or the CM interpretation, it is in perfect alignment. But when the CM is tilted 30 degrees towards the head end of the patient, the needle moves down, That the needle moves to the foot end of the patient. So this is what happens. If you remember this, the opposite is true about posterior calyx. Once you have this understanding of CM, puncture is easy. Once entry is easy, the whole surgery becomes easy. This is the third scenario that can happen. The surgeon is now trying to puncture, again, the anterior calyx, the pink one, but he is just below it. In CM, it appears that he is in perfect alignment again. So in this scenario, when the CM is tilted towards the head end, the needle is also moving towards the head end. That means you are posterior to the desired target. Now all you need to do is just withdraw the needle and point it towards the sky. You will be into the desired target. So this is what is a 3D representation. But what happens in reality, I will show you. So there are three things uh, happening here. There are three there are three structures here. One is the guide rod, other one is the puncture needle, and another one is guide wire. As you can see, the guide wire is in is a perfect puncture placed and parked securely. The central rod or guide rod is on the posterior surface of the kidney. That is posterior uh, posterior surface of the patient. That is uh, posterior to the kidney. And the puncture needle is on the anterior surface of the kidney. That is on the uh, anterior surface of the patient. So what happens when the CM is rotated to 30 degree, we shall, we shall see now. So in zero degree, all three are in perfect alignment. So once the CM is being rotated 30 degrees towards the head end of the patient, you can see the central rod, which is posterior, is moving towards the head end. The needle, puncture needle, which is anterior, is moving towards the foot end. And our perfectly parked guide wire is not showing any movement. So this is how you can understand CM and proceed for dilatation. So another uh, thing how you can interpret CM is uh, very well demonstrated in one of the videos by Dr. Mehmet in Pew Urology. You can tilt the CM towards you. So when you are trying to tilt the CM towards you, anterior calyces move towards the spine. But the thing about uh, why I did not uh, personally like this technique is the movement is not very much appreciated when compared to the cephalocardal movement. In cephalocardal uh, rotation, the needle movement is much marked and you will have a much better understanding. But when you are try, trying to turn the CM towards you, the needle movement is of the order of few millimeters. So the chance of understanding and uh, repositioning of the needle is difficult. So this is again what happens uh, when you are trying to move the CM towards you. So same thing, the three things are in perfect alignment in zero degree. Now I am trying to move the CM towards me. As you can see, the one which is superficial, that is the uh, puncture needle, is moving close to the spine. And the central rod, which is uh, posterior, is moving away from the spine. So if you want to learn, uh, uh, do the puncture in this technique, yes, it is always uh, acceptable. But my personal choice, as I said, is uh, moving the CM towards the Kepler direction. For a safe PCNL, Entry is of paramount importance. Selection of the calyx will, uh, should be of paramount importance. It should always be a short, straight track, which will enable you to perform a safe surgery. The first step is have a surface marking. Identify your puncture site. Do the depth assessment. And yes, once you have done the depth assessment, 
you can see the saline uh, coming out freely and you can uh, park your guide well and proceed for surgery. My observation is almost always in supine PCNL, punctures are almost parallel to the floor. In prone PCNL, we try to look from above below. In supine PCNL, almost all punctures are parallel to the floor. So this is one video uh, I caught upon. See, as you can see, this I was doing in November 2021, early days of my supine PCNL. I was, uh, my mindset was different. I always wanted to target the lower calyx. So you can see my puncture needle in uh, uh, the video one. It is way below the line that I have drawn uh, as an anterior superior relaxed spine. I'm trying to puncture the lower calyx. But uh, it was unsuccessful. You can see how many uh, poor, uh, punctures I have made. Then um, it's all, you need to change your mindset. Once I felt, no, this is not the right way and chose a uh, more uh, uh, keflard uh, calyx, then I made a successful puncture. So. It all requires change in mindset to accept that supine PCNL is way forward. It is definitely an upgrade from prone PCNL. And this is also one uh, video. As I said, in the initial days, I was uh, uh, having the mindset, no, no, anyways, I have to do only a lower calicial or a subcostal puncture. I was afraid uh, to do a supracostal puncture because many studies were telling you will injure the liver or you will injure the uh, bowel, all these complications. But uh, off late, supracostal punctures also can be easily done. This is a staggering calculus. Access was done to a supracostal uh, puncture dilatation to 24 French and complete stone removal was done. So as I said, in the initial days, try to make a nine squares. It will be of uh, great use because uh, when you are moving the CM for depth assessment towards uh, 30 degree, when you find your needle, if, if your needle is moving way cranially or quarterly, it means you may have to completely come out and choose a different square. But if the movement of CM, if the movement of needle is uh, of the order of few mm, then all you need to do is angulate your needle either towards the say, sky or towards the floor, depending upon where it is moving. So as you can see in this particular patient, uh, targeting a uh, lateral calyx, you can see there is no efflux of saline, uh, even on 30 degree when I have seen, there is a small movement of the needle towards the foot end. That means I was a little bit anterior. All, needed, all I needed to do was just withdraw the needle, angulate it towards the floor, and bang on. There's free fluid, uh, free saline coming out. So, in the initial days, try to make a box, try to understand how far your needle is moving in the cephalocaudal direction on changing the CR. So, this is one uh, particular patient. Uh, you can see multiple stones, bilateral, uh, partial UBJO. There are certain other issues uh, which need to be addressed and you need to understand while doing uh, uh, supine PCNL. The kidney is mobile. Um, one is because of uh, respiration and also there is uh, medial lateral movement. As you can see in this particular patient, after making a successful puncture, I was not able to, it took some time for me to uh, get into the pelvic calicial system. There was kinking of the guide well. These things quite often happen with uh, supine PCNL than with prone PCNL. So to avoid this, uh, always it is better, though uh, the mini perk uh, they advise that do a single step dilatation, it is always better if you are having some uh, muscular male or redo case, obese. In these patients, always uh, do a facial dilatation or use the Alkan uh, dilatation before doing uh, a dilatation with uh, your uh, starch uh, dilator. You can see how mobile uh, kidneys are in uh, supine PCNL, but uh, nothing to worry about it. Even with, uh, you can see with the puncture needle itself, the kidney was moving uh, medially towards the spine. All you need to do is uh, uh, tell the patient to hold his uh, her respiration, ask your assistant to apply some counter pressure. This will, this will stabilize the kidney. Small tips which will help in decreasing the mobility. So this is a particularly useful instrument which has been developed by Storge. Uh, this is Storge Mini Park 
for uh, supine PCNL, which is uh, extra length than the standard uh, um, uh, PCNL uh, mini perk uh, dilator. It's almost, uh, as you can see, that uh, it is up, uh, almost up to 20 centimeters, and the dilator is close to 30 centimeters. What I am going to show here is uh, uh, we have the there is a new thing in the market, Indian uh, stuff, which is uh, uh, which is more long than the starch uh, dilator. You can see it is almost 23 centimeters and the dilator is close to 24, 25 centimeters. It hardly costs 16,000 rupees. The major advantage of uh, this Indian uh, uh, dilating system is it can accommodate a central rod. Unlike wolf or storage um, uh, dilators, which we have to do the dilatation over guide wear, where you will have difficulty because of kinking and mobility of kidney, using a central rod will definitely help you to stabilize the tract. Most of the time, what happens is you make a puncture, kidney is mobile, you lose memory of your tract. So when you lose memory of your tract, when you're trying to dilate, especially with a long puncture or a hyperbolic puncture, hyperbolic guide wear, what happens is uh, you may have to negotiate the dilator in a different path. So to avoid this, in these particular scenarios and obese patients, definitely the central rod uh, will help. So we need to be innovative. This I have seen one video in uh, YouTube and adopted this. So this you can see there is there are two stones, one in the middle calyx and pelvis and one in the upper calyx. I made a uh, middle calyxial puncture and tried to remove the stone in the upper calyx, but uh, could not uh, go there. You are always having the option to do a supracostal puncture again, and the puncture dilate and remove the stone. But if you are having a flexible scope, always pass that flexible scope into the sheath, basket it, bring the stone into a favorable location, and then you can um, completely clear the stone. Again, as I said, uh, this was one of the first case, very few cases, uh, early cases that have taken up uh, stagon um, calculus. Initially, I thought uh, stagon cannot be done in um, uh, supine PCNL, stone PCNL would be safe. But this particular patient, as you can see, completely packed stagon calculus, lower calicial puncture was done, and complete stone removal could be achieved. So if in the initial days you are having um, doubts of doing a supracostal puncture, watch this video by Dr. Arun Kumar sir, posted in Pure Urology. It's a wonderful video. He has demonstrated how you can reach the upper calyx from a lower calyxial puncture. Um, after this, I also started to realize the advantage of uh, approaching the upper calyx from a lower calyxial puncture. You can see here, sitting and operating, ergonomics, and the other thing is how angulated my scope, nephroscope is, I am able to access the upper calyx from a lower calyxial puncture and completely clear the stone. As I said, whirlpooling is not uh, completely for the uh, mini perk sheet. You can do whirlpooling with uh, a standard nephroscope also. So once you start understanding the anatomy, once you start understanding the um, CM interpretation, you can take up any case as I have shown you uh, complex cases like this, as you can see, multiple calyces are there, stagon calyx, matrix stones, all, all kinds of uh, um, stones can be safely done under supine PCNL. So this is one case you can see, which is a stagon calculus, almost occupying the whole kidney, supine PCNL, multiple punctures done, complete stone could be cleared. See, why, what I am trying to impress here is if I am able to do it, you can do it. There is no need to invest time, no need to go anywhere. You have lots of resources on YouTube where you can learn and master the art of supine PCNL. This is a post-op case of pyelolithotomy. It was done by some general surgeon. Patient came with lots of pus. Ultrasound guided puncture done. And see, if you learn supine PCNL, you can also do a ultrasound guided puncture. Ultrasound guided Abscess drainage was done, uh, pus drainage was done. As I said, if you're having the concept, this is a uh, video uh, done by Dr. Chandra Mohan. Um, 
So if you're having the concept of interpreting CRM, if you're having your basic sound, this particular patient I have taken up for uh, supine PCNL. Uh, I thought it would be a cakewalk because lastly dilated kidney. But unfortunately, the guideway was uh, not passing through. So again, applying the physics of CRM, targeting the stone, uh, I adjusted the depth and made a puncture into the pelvic cell system, injected contrast from the uh, needle which is shown below. And as you can see, now the system is filled. Now proceeded for the upper cell puncture and completely cleared the stone. So even a blind puncture can be done in supine PCNL. So for all patients, um, I put a DJ stent. Nephrostomy, plus or minus, depends on the case, stagon calculus or I abstract the system. Uh, I tend to put a nephrostomy. And I educate all patients to um, get a stone analysis done and educate about diet. No surgery is without complications. In the last three years, I had my own set of complications. Obviously, bleeding. Um, I had to do clot evacuations. Uh, one patient recently, I have done a supine PC for the retained digestion. He presented with a um, large perirenal hematoma. Urine leak, urosepsis, all complications which can happen in prone will happen. There is no new complication that can happen in supine PCNL, so we need not worry about that. So this particular patient, I have done a uh, supine PCNL for retained digestion. As you can see, there is a large perirenal hematoma. Uh, but of course, um, I just withdrew the... Luckily for me, the nephrostomy track and the tube was in situ. Withdrew the nephrostomy track and uh, uh, most of the hematoma could be cleared from that. Anything can happen if the day is not yours. In this patient, you can see, ureteric catheter placed, contrast given for RGP, and there is a pelvic perforation. Just don't worry, wait for some time. Um, again, uh, after watching a video from uh, Dr. Sabnis, sir, and Dr. S. K. Palsar, I came to know. Initially, when I used to find these kind of situations, I used to just put a stent, come out, and uh, take up the patient for RIRS. So, off late, what I understood it, it, it can it will absorb in 15-20 minutes. It will be absorbed. So wait for some time. Um, talk to your colleagues or with the anesthetist. Um, watch some videos. Come back again after 15-20 minutes. In this particular patient, I passed a electroscope and uh, parked a guide wire and then proceeded for surgery. So just 15-20 minutes will do the job. This is true. This is a, a pelvic perforation can happen during dilatation during stone breaking. Again, uh, initially, I had a few cases of uh, pelvic injury. Recently, I've seen a video where uh, um, there was over dilatation, overshooting, and uh, even uh, peritoneum breach was there. So these kind of videos, when you see on YouTube, you will be confident. TK, if nothing has happened to that patient, nothing will happen to your patient also. This will give confidence. So whatever videos you are coming across, spend time, analyze, correlate with what work you are doing and that will add to your progress. Anything can be a complication, whichever adds to the morbidity of the patient. This particular patient, supine PCL done, small case, nothing, uneventful. But post-operative, he was complaining of constant urine leak for 48 hours after removing the nephrostomy tract. X-ray KUB almost looks like uh, the stent is in position. But uh, again, I had my own doubts, got an ultrasound done. And it showed that the stent was a little bit below the pelvic electric junction. All I needed to was to replace the stent. And uh, within a couple of hours, the issue settled. So as I said, PCNL, learning supine PCNL, why it is advantageous. This particular patient, uh, I counseled uh, them for URSL or open ureteral lithotomy and uh, supine PCNL. As soon as I placed the ureteric catheter, stone migrated into upper calyx. So as I said, Lower calyx to upper calyx is uh, definitely possible in supine. This is a almost a middle calyxial puncture, dilated to 24 French. And with a middle calyxial puncture also, you can beautifully visualize what's happening in the upper calyx. Um, complete stone could be cleared from a middle calyxial puncture. And as I said, well pooling is not only per uh, mini perk. You can see here with a 24 French also, there is beautiful... Uh, retrieval of stones with the valve pooling. If you want to enhance your valve pooling, you can ask your assistant to give manual compression or um, inject some saline to the 
ഇതൊക്കെ പറ്റിയിട്ട് ഓബിയസ്ലി ദർ ആർ സർട്ടൻ ചാലഞ്ചസ് ആസ് ലൈക്ക് വിത്ത് ഓം പി സിനൽ ദർ ആർ സം ചാലഞ്ചസ് വിത്ത് സൂപ്പർ ആൻഡ് പി സിനൽ ഓൾസോ സം ടൈംസ് എസ്പെഷ്യലി വിത്ത് ലോവർ കെലിക്സ് യു മേ ഹാവ് ടു ഗോ ടു ആൻറ്റീരിയർ ഇൻ ദീസ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻസ് ഡോണ്ട് വറി വാച്ച് വാട്ട് ഡോക്ടർ അനുകുമാർ ഹാസ് ടോൾഡ് യു ക്യാൻ ഡ്രോ യുവർ പോസ്റ്റർ ആക്സലി ലൈൻ മോർ മീഡിയൽ ഈവൻ ദൻ ഇഫ് യു ആർ ഹാവിങ് സം ഡൗട്ട്സ് ഓൾവേസ് യൂസ് എ അൾട്രാസൗണ്ട് it will help you to localize if there is any bowel coming between the needle and the uh, kidney two posterior yes this is a problem when you are doing especially a posterior calicial puncture but the solution is you can sit and operate you can tilt the patient and also you can tilt the table also it will free up and open the space and most of the surgeons uh, complain that uh, supine patient there is collapsing of system so all you need to do is increase the height of your irrigation channel or ask your assistant to give some manual pressure stone migration uh, especially in rheumy kidneys this can happen but uh, the advantage of supine pcnl is you can walk through all the calices uh, easily even then if you are not able to do that um, as i said you can pass your flexible scope and the puncture you can do and uh, remove the stone sometimes it is not your day and it's not uh, the patient's day so don't be over zealous if you are not able to puncture take a deep breath and uh, it is always uh, graceful to accept that you are not able to puncture come back another day take someone's help and uh, always there is a backup plan you can do rirs or you can do a prone pcnl some other day so it is better not to um, be over zealous and harming the patient anyways so with this uh, i want to uh, conclude my presentation and uh, as i said it is obviously better to be equipped having multiple arrows in your quiver so stone you can approach eswl you can approach with uh, flexible urs you can approach ecirs bone pcnl supine everything so why not add one more arrow to your armamentarium why not learn supine pcnl when i can do it learning from internet you can also do it there are multiple videos um watch it enhance uh, your skill and you can definitely um adopt uh, supine pcnl as humans have evolved this is a wonderful book which i am as of now reading um, that is how we have evolved when uh, during uh, maybe some 4 5 million years ago it still uh, we do not know how people from africa migrated to australia when they could they could do it without any technology nothing uh, it's really unimaginable how they have crossed the ocean and uh, uh, reached the island so if that can happen watching internet watching youtube videos and um, learning supine pcnl can easily happen and uh, i thank everyone for your patient listening and uh, thanks uh, to chandramohan sir for giving the opportunity uh, thank you dr hemant Uh, if time yeah. permits just want to share one slide uh, i yeah, yeah. just uh, i did a survey yesterday i posted with a uh, young urologist i got uh, some around 65 responses on what is their uh, take on uh, supine pcnl so almost 53% they are doing supine pcnl after 65 uh, people who have responded and uh, 50% are feeling that supine pcnl is the way forward it will replace bone pcnl and most of the learning they have had is during urology residency but my learning was uh, uh, through internet that is what i have shared so far so what is the major thing that is holding back i felt it is the mindset but uh, most of the see most of the um, uh, people are comfortable with doing prone pcnl abhi why we need to learn a new technique so i think that mindset we need to change and yes. uh, according to most of the participants interpretation of cm and uh, having a mobile kidney is what is most difficult part in um, supine pcnl and as i said cm doesn't change physics doesn't change so prone or supine 
the siam interpretation is the same our orientation changes sir our orientation changes that's it thank you for your excellent presentation uh, sir uh, really wonderful presentation definitely uh, young upcoming uh, supine pcl surgeons they should uh, add this uh, to their playlist of uh, uh, as you have told what you have uh, kept as a playlist they should add, add this video also definitely so that uh, i think you have summarized uh, all the uh, gist of all the uh, senior surgeons what they have already told us you have summarized uh, very nicely along with uh, your own videos so that uh, we could all uh, understand better and yeah. uh, the graphics uh, which you have shown for uh, cm interpretation i think uh, it's one of the best uh, that is uh, till date available uh, yeah. so you have, you have made the point very clear there because there was a lot of confusion for me in yeah, understanding yeah. in understanding because all the time there are multiple videos that are available or on 2d or on cm so you are understanding this again as i said you are seeing a 2d image and trying to understand a 3d stuff so i thought anyways i am having some time i will invest uh, once for all i think i want to make some uh, impression so i thought i will make a 3d video that's a very nice video so initially when chandramohan sir he also from a conference with supain peter and he started we were all there uh, fellows uh, that time so we used to do lot of research on that and we made our own pictures all these kind of things but this graphics was very very good what you have uh... i hope definitely after watching this um, uh, 3d animation people will have a better understanding yeah, and uh, take up should uh, all take, should watch this okay. and uh, then uh, definitely they will get a idea how the cm orientation should be exactly uh, thank you sir and uh, naresh any question one one question ah. vivek beautiful okay. point sir in learn patient turn 15 degrees away from you that's the question uh, so I, i did not get the question yes sir beautiful point in okay. lean in lean patient turn 15 degrees away from you aha uh -huh, that's what so uh, already see, mentioned that i think yeah, yeah. so it's lean all patient. again once you understand cm you can turn 10 15 20 whatever it is if it is overlapping over the spine you need you need to tilt it more as simple as that but yeah. what happens is during uh, over the course of time uh, you will understand tk no problem i can you will be able to visualize and you can uh, make a puncture but still as dr vivek has said yes you can tilt it more definitely sir so, one more question uh, harshavardhan uh, what are ideal cases for select for supine pcnl for a beginner so there is first point again as i am telling it is all the mindset please change that mindset there is no beginner there is no senior nothing every case that you can take up for prone pcnl can be taken up for supine pcnl and um as you asked the question i also had the same thing uh, i used to select roomy pelvis i used to select a dilated pelvic elliptical system i used to select a upper elliptic zone with grossly dilated system this is what were my uh, initial supine pcnl uh, selected cases but in my experience don't select anything in any case you want to do as prone pcnl try doing supine if you are not able to do supine then you tilt and go for prone if you are not trying at all and directly going for the prone pcnl the mindset will not change try supine hoga to hoga if you are not doing it then you can tilt uh, you can um, uh, always change the position and go for a prone pcnl hardly just extra 30 minutes you need to spend so sir do you uh, tilt the patient more for uh, upper calcial puncture or the same uh, no 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 position. sir same same, uh, same position see uh, as i said upper calyx is quite far from the posterior axillary line so while you are doing upper calcial puncture obviously what you said i, I drawn a diagram with pink and green so what happens is you are going away from the posterior axillary line definitely what happens is your scope will try to touch the table low what you can do is just increase the height of the table and you sit 
it will definitely be a great advantage even then if you are not able to have good ergonomics you can uh, tilt the patient yes. uh, sir, one... your experience uh, ecrs as a single surgeon no, 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 I have not done ECRS. That's what I mentioned. So as I am not doing ECRS, I stopped using the lithotomy position or stirrups. Why? Okay. As I am not doing, there is no point in putting the patient in lithotomy. I do not have that much equipment. I am so, operating. So multiple calcium stones. You take multiple punctures, or uh, you do. You don't uh, feel like doing ECRS. Uh, multiple punctures, I do. And the uh, thing is, you have now these different dilators. Uh, obviously, uh, small dilators are available. 12 French dilators are also there. It will accommodate your mini perk. What I do is, if I had done a lower calicial puncture, 24 French, and there's a small fragment in the upper calyx or middle calyx, which are not able to access, I put a 12 French or 14 French dilatation. But the thing about it is, if you are straight away going and doing a 12 French or 14 French sheath, it will, the irrigation is not that good. But if you're already having a open amplage in C2 in another calyx, then uh, you can make a 12 French or 14 French dilatation. Sometimes what I do is I also pass electroscope to remove small fragments. All these things are jugat. You need to try something small. Small stone, why you need to again dilate 24 French? Make a small 14 French or 12 French dilatation, pass electroscope and remove the stone. So all your supine PCRs will be in... Uh... Now, no lithotomy. No lithotomy. No lithotomy. Maybe first 10 or 15 cases uh, after watching the Dr. Aditya Sharma so videos. You, you don't uh, feel that you are taking out the major advantage of uh, supine PCNL, that is uh, retrograde access. Yeah, see, retro, for retrograde access, uh, uh, two surgeons, two monitors, everything, uh, more staff. I am not that equipped. So, I'm also so single I surgeon here. So I do myself the RIRS part and I go there and I do the uh -huh, just so now I have done an ECIRS now. Just after uh, the case. Single, uh, yes, single. So instead for that, uh, for alternative to that, what we can do is we can do this jugad. You can pass your flexible electroscope to the access sheet uh, to through the uh the system will be collapsing too much, I think, after uh, passing. No, then you the... can ask your assistant to give flush from the electric catheter. Flush from below. Uh, so far, uh, I did not have any problem with that. Maybe you can give it a try. Uh, so because you are the, is the mother of invention. Comfortable for us, we should follow that. Exactly. Ultimately, exactly. patient should, stone should be cleared and without any complications. Exactly. 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 And uh, I have no shame in uh, uh, telling the patient there is a residual fragment. I need to do a check RIRS instead. Uh, very if, if there is a one centimeter stone residual fragment which I am not able to access, I will tell TK one after one month I will take you up for uh, uh, RIRS and uh, de stone it. Sir, so two more questions, sir. Ah. Yes, definitely. Harshavadan, especially in obese patient with hypermobile kidney, what are the tips and tricks? So, first step is before surgery, counsel the patient. Tell him that you will have to hold your respiration on command. This is very, very important. So once you tell that, you will explain him, um, it will be add to your benefit. And uh, as will I said, it not scare the patient, sir? No, no, you, that's, why you have to... Them to... <laughs> <laughs> that's why you have to spend some time with them. Uh, tell them, uh, just hold the respiration. See, that is, that I is think also... It, uh, obese patients, the kidney mobility will not be that much, I think. Uh, in... Thin patients' mobility will be more. Obese patients, there will be a lot of fat covering that, that will have the cushion. So, uh, obesity is actually a benefit to this uh, supine feature. So, Function will be easy. For mobile patients, also, for mobile kidneys, whatever it is, if you are using a central rod, it will add to stability. If you are trying to do your dilatation over a guide wear, then you find the difficulty. But if you are trying to do your dilatation over a central rod, all these things are of no matter. So that's what I said. You invest 15,000, 16,000 rupees, buy that Indian dilator, which will accommodate the central rod. Your life will become easy. All these things uh, will be nullified, mitigated. Before passing guide rod, you do facial dilatation or just uh, directly guide? Sir, my standard is uh, 
I first puncture and then pass alkane dilator, just one that metal dilator once, and then I put the uh, mini perk uh, dilator. Okay. But if I find it's more hypermobile or something uh, um, kinking guideware, I pass the central rod and then uh, through the alkane uh, uh, perforator and proceed for uh, further dilatation. Okay. That is a beautiful thing, a Indian thing, uh, 16,000. Uh, lot of problems are solved for me. One more question, I, sir. Yeah. Kaushik, how to handle lower calyx yes, parallel to supine where the scope will hit yes. and iliac crest? Uh, that, uh, there is a wonderful video just recently released by Dr. Chanamon, sir. <laughs> you can uh, watch that uh, video, Dr. Kaushik. Yes. Especially lower calyceal punctures which are almost parallel to the spine and which you, which are deep are definitely difficult uh, cases in spine PCNL. Uh, I have actually put up a video where there are two stones. One was in the lowermost calyx and one was just above it. I made a two punctures. So most of the times, even if you are if the stone is there in the lower calyx, you can go from a different calyx and you can easily pass your scope in the lower calyx and remove the stone. Try that; uh, it will definitely work out. Yeah. Otherwise, what, as we, I said, what we do is we'll straighten the leg. Uh, just like attach the leg, cylinder uh, leg, so that we can have some angle. And also, we take the puncture uh, through the skin and subcutaneous part of the iliac crest over the iliac crest. Yeah. Use that as the leverage and go inside, so that we'll gain more angle. But uh, the parallel medial uh, lower calyces are little uh, difficult. Little in a difficult. As you so, said, some other calyx can be used uh, to reach that. Some other calyx are initially itself have the open mindset that you will make a upper calyceal puncture, though it is a supracostal puncture, go make a upper calyceal puncture and pass your flexible scope in it and uh, approach the lower calyx. My uh, my jugad is that. I try to do that. Versatile yeah. position, we can uh, have a lot of options. Yes. yes. If, uh, RIR is also an option. Any, any more questions, Naren? No, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful session. Uh, good uh, record. Uh, this People will have this uh, for uh, learning this uh, Supine PCRL. Thank you for your uh, time and wonderful presentation, sir. Thank you so much. I'm thankful and grateful to Pure Urology. <laughs> um, I am acknowledging it again because it is only because of watching videos from YouTube and especially Dr. Chandamohan sir's videos uh, that I have picked up uh, uh, the art of supine PCNL. And uh, always my constant support was my brother, Dr. Kaushik, who used to tell, TK, you can do supine. If I'm doing, why you can't do? So he was also motivating me from Hyderabad. So that is how I motivated, got motivated and uh, started learning this. So once again, I'm telling if um, I am able to do it you also can do it. Watch those videos. Definitely, you can upgrade your skill from prone to supine. It is definitely an upgradation. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much you. Uh, for the opportunity.